Hello, hi. Welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. How are you doing? I hope everyone is doing great. I am fine. I'm happy. It's a lovely, lovely, beautiful weather out there. Maybe I should just show you. <clears throat> Let me see if I can do that. Can you see the blue sky? Can you see the beautiful, gorgeous blue sky? Can you see? Oh my goodness, such a lovely weather. Beautiful. Oh, long ago, you and I know, well, for those of us who live in the, in the UK, you do know that it was a very gloomy weather. No sun. It was dark. It was cold. Freezing. But, voila, things are changing. Things are changing. So, what am I talking about to you guys today? Change will come. And there is the gloomy weather, a dark cloud that had covered the whole earth for the past over one year now. But we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Things are looking up again. The economy is picking up again. Businesses are beginning to open again. Things are changing. Lockdown are lifting up or lockdowns are lifting up. So I don't know what it is that you're going through, you have been through, and it looked like there was never going to be an end to it. Guess what? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Your sun will rise again. Your sun will rise again. It will be all good again. All right? So hang on there. Keep your hopes alive. Do not ever let them die. There's a better day coming. All right? One more thing I want to talk about again this uh, beautiful morning. Um, I know somebody, uh, one or two people have called me Spot Mama before. And to be honest with you, I have officially adopted that title. I am a Spot Mama. Not much of Spot myself, but I've got children who are actively involved in sports. Um, my eldest son is the, <laughs> he's the rugby champion. <laughs> he plays rugby. The middle one or the second one, no longer middle plays football and my daughter the third one she's into netball she's the reason why i'm where i am right now. i'm in uh, kent in Gillingham, Rayham in Gillingham, where i bring her now lockdown is over so i'm back to my saturday runs again or you know saturday sunday runs again driving them places for one thing or the other so i'm here on the saturday morning um bringing her for her um, netball match did I mention that it was netball? Did I say something else? Anyway, netball. Okay, netball match. So we're here and I'm waiting in the car because of COVID. We, we are not allowed to stand and watch. So it's everyone stay in your car. So fine. Um, I'm happy with the car. So it's time for me to reflect, spend a little time to pray, to read. And I just got, you know, thinking. I could see, I mean, you know, I just showed you guys the cut just now. I could see them from where I am in the car. And I was just thinking last week we were at the trainings and I had the enormous time and hours they spend in training. And that one, the worst one is the rugby one. I can hardly stand their training, not to talk about the matches itself. I have been going for this trainings, taking my son on training matches and whatever for years now, but I still can't stand it. There's too much, that's, you know, sport is too physical for my liking. And, you know, they get hot a lot during the matches with bleeding, broken this, broken that, concussion, and all manner of things happen at every match, okay, with them. So there was a time I took my son, and I was just thinking about it, and he came to me today. There was a time I took him on one of his matches, and he came back. I noticed that he was hot on the field. So they took him out of this field, did a little bit of first aid or something. And it, before you knew what was happening, he was back in there. And I was like, I, I was thinking this boy was going to come out. There was back in their play and it played to the end of the match. And, you know, needless to say that they did win the match. In fact, he, for several years, he made a covenant or like a commitment with God, a promise. I don't know what he did with God, that he was never going to be on the losing team. And consistently his team, right through secondary school, had always been in uni, same thing. And the club he plays with also, uh, God has been giving them that favor. So anyway, so he, they won. And he got to the camp where like, I saw how you were hot. He came and he was not limping and he was acting like, oh my God, I'm dead. And that's what happens. Then I have to go home and do the massaging. Mom, please massage this. 
massage that. Then I bring out the balm and I begin to massage. And I said, but while you were playing there, you didn't act like you were in pain. You were running for the ball. You were, you know, I honestly think I don't know much about that sport, <laughs> to be honest with you. But you were doing all that you had to do. You were doing the scrum. You know, he does the scrum. He's got the big muscles and everything. You were doing all that there. You acted like there was nothing wrong with you. Then when you come in the car, you acted like you're going to die. Okay, and you come home, you can't lift a finger, you can't lift a leg, and you're acting all like, oh, I'm in pains. But while you were there, you didn't act that way. They asked you to come out, you refused to be out of that thing. You were there playing. And he made the statement that I never forgot. Uh, you know, I said, Mom, while you are there, the adrenaline that is pumping in you, the, the desire to win that is in you, you don't feel the pain. Now, a lot of times when he comes out, sometimes then he's noticed that, okay, he's cut his lips, he's something, he's bleeding somewhere. That sometimes you don't even realize how much you have been hurt because there is a drive in you to win. And you are more concerned about that than how you are feeling. That is only when you have come out and then the whole thing begins to sink in. So I was like, wow, okay, adrenaline, okay, fine. But since then, it meant a lot to me. Um, why does it mean so much? And even as I'm sitting here again, reflecting and thinking about all that, I was just now the scripture, Second Corinthians chapter four, I think from verse 16, 17, 18, Paul was saying something there. He said, you know, even though the outer part of us is depleting, but the inner part is, you know, getting stronger. He said the pain that we are going through in the verse 17, he said, the pain we are going through is temporary. He said, cause it light affliction. He said it is only temporary because why? In comparison to the glory that is ahead. In comparison to what we stand to gain, whatever we are going through here on earth is temporary. Brothers and sisters, I've come to say to you that if your eyes are focused on the end game, if your eyes are focused on the crown of glory, if your eyes are on the beauty that lies ahead, the Bible says, for the glory that was ahead, Jesus Christ endured the cross. He went through that because of what he had seen ahead, what he stands to gain. So that statement my son made, you know, watching matches and seeing how people sweat it out. It is for that trophy and it's temporary and it will be destroyed and it only lasts for a moment. So that pain, whatever worries whatever the enemy is throwing at you right now i want you to see it in perspective you know in comparison to where you are going and what it desires to bring out in you the bible says in james chapter 1 rejoice when you are tempted when you are facing trials and persecution why because it's working something of an internal value in you something good is coming out of what you're going through but how you deal with it while you're in it, your attitude and your perspective you have while you're going through it will determine how you come out. It will determine how you will bear it. As my son said, the adrenaline. The Holy Spirit is your adrenaline. And he said, he talks about the victory, the passion, the zeal, the desire to win, the desire to come out triumphantly. Oh, if it overwhelms you, you will bear whatever you are bearing and you will smile through it. And then you will indeed do as James said, rejoice because something great is coming out. So I just want to encourage you today. Focus on the cross. Focus on the eternal glory, the crown, that last one that will uh, last forever. And even here on earth, after you've gone through all you've gone through, Second Peter 5, 10, the Lord will perfect you. The Lord will establish you. The Lord will strengthen you. And the Lord will set to you, even in this side of eternity. And more so, greater glory lies ahead. God bless you. This is Hope Alive again with Mary. Visit our channels. There are a lot of encouraging and hope-lifting messages as we look forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Subscribe if you haven't, like, share it with your friends and let us get everyone trusting the Lord. And if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, <laughs> you are missing out. You're missing out. You're missing out. I invite you to give your life to Jesus. I invite you to surrender. He paid a huge price for you to win you as a crown. And I pray that his, his, his sacrifice shall not be a waste over your life. God bless you. I'll see you shortly again. Bye.